Hi, John Dursick here with the Holland Department of Transportation in the Office of CAD and Mapping Services. And this video is going to go over how to use Print Organizer with the O.CAD standards. So, to start out, we're going to open MicroStation. And to do that, make sure that you select the project, appropriate project. Then I'm just going to open up the title sheet. So, once the file opens, we're going to launch print organizer and to do that we're going to go up here file print organizer and so some of you guys might get an additional dialogue here asking you to select the plot config file since I've opened this previously I've already selected it but this is what the dialogue would look like so some of you guys might get this if it's your first time opening print organizer so you should see four plot config files and the plot config file kind of sets up you know where you're going to print it to and what are you going to print and then there's thing like print styles that says how to print it so um, you could select it but the print style actually specifies what plot config file to use so um, I'll briefly explain them the first one o.cad is to set up so that it prints to a printer and then the next one's set up to print to PDF. The next one's set up to print to PDF again, but this time to add the levels into the PDF so you can turn the levels on and off. Um, this might be removed in the future because it, the PDF's file size has got you know, really large doing it like this, so we're probably not going to use that. And then the last one sets it up for printing to a printer just like the first one does, except set up to size for eight and a half by eleven. Um, that's why there's an L on it for letter letter size. So you typically would select that, but as I said before, the print style handles that. So this is what the dog would look like. Um, so print organizer your you is a PSET file and your PSET file is what contains your print set. So um, for every project there is a, a template preset file that was added to the the folder structure for that project and so that's what we're going to start with so we're going to open that so file open and you'll notice it goes straight to that location because when we launched MicroStation we selected that project down in the corner over it was right around here so you want to select it it'll just be named with the PID number dot preset and we don't need to save changes to the untitled one because we didn't do anything with it. So you notice you have a bunch of folders. So these folders represent what a bookmark will be when you print your multi-page PDF. So you don't have to use them all. You can change them, add add folders, delete folders. Um, if you leave a folder and you don't add a sheet inside that folder, when you create the multi-page PDF, that bookmark isn't there. So it just kind of skips over it. But, so you can put folders inside of folders to represent a bookmark inside of a bookmark. If you want to delete one, you can just you know right click on it and hit delete. If you want to rename one, you can right click on it and hit rename. If you want to add a folder, you can go up here, file, add folders to set. So I just added that. I'm going to delete that now. So to add files, you can do it a couple of different ways. Under file, you can add active file to set, which will just add the file you have open. Um, you can add files to set. This will bring up a dialog to select those files that you'd want to add to the set. When you're using these, you, whatever folder you have selected is where it's going to put those sheets that it brings in. So if I were to, if I have this one selected, I hit File, Add Active Folder to Set. So you see it already added that. You can add more if you want. And then the print style name is blank, but it's going to use the default print style. So you don't need to select one. You can if you want to. Here's all the print styles. I'll go over these in a second. But this is the default one that it's going to use. So it's going to go through that file and it's looking for this sheet cut level 
it's got to be a shape and it's got to be in a sheet model and so if there were multiple it would bring in all the sheets that it found and then another way of adding files is to just navigate to those files you can just select it drag and drop over the folder you want you get the same dialog as as before and it'll go through and add the files so this one had two sheets there's the model it came from there's the name so if you need to move these around you can click and that'll move it around one thing to note is if you want it to go inside of a folder you want to you know make sure you highlight that folder so you can drop it into into the folder rather than at the same level of the folder you can also click over here and you can drop them into folders that way as well and so I didn't show this last way of adding just a file to set but it's a similar way I'll just like some some random one so obviously I didn't want that to go there so I'd want it to go here so I'll add these profile ones in here and so you guys are probably wondering how does it know to bring in that name so um, these PCI files are set up to use a, a print definition to name the incoming sheets automatically so the print definition is grabbing the model property for a sheet the sheet name so under the models for a sheet model in the properties is sheet name and sheet number so it's grabbing the sheet name and using that as the name for the sheet when it comes into print organizer so one thing I want to mention is that when you use the sheet manager application it's filling out that model property automatically so you don't have to worry about doing it so what it's grabbing is the sheet title so if there was two sh if there's two lines and that sheet title is just you know well I'm on the title sheet but it's right here on other sheets so it's just grabbing these two lines throwing them together and putting them in the sheet model so that's how that all works kind of automatically so you don't have to worry about it so it's kind of nice and so what I think the huge advantage is now you can look and know exactly what the page is like what station range it is without having to look at that file first so um, now if you want to change the name you can highlight all the folders and you can do bulk name changes and so you can go to edit rename by expression and so here's the print definition I was talking about that's using by default there's some Bentley custom ones you can use if you wanted to or you can make your own by clicking custom and then you can edit this and so I'm not going to go through all that that's more advanced so but it can be done there just note that whatever you have highlighted is what gets changed so another thing is saving you want to save your PSET file and so say you come back to it and later on and you have changes well just like iPlot worked these are basically snapshots of the file at that time so if you removed or turned the levels on and off that's not going to be represented in in this if you've already added the file before you made those changes so what you'd want to do is update and so to do that you'd want to again highlight all the folders and then under edit properties under the advanced tab is update from design file so you check that on hit OK and then that'll update those uh, like snapshots if you want to call it that so then your PCI file would be updated so 
Now, I mentioned print styles. So you can apply print styles to specific sheets. So if you needed to change for some reason some of the sheets the way you want it printed, you can just select those sheets. I'm just going to select all of them. Under tools, you can apply print style. And so here's all the print styles. Their names are pretty self-explanatory. So I'm going to fix that level name. One shouldn't be there. But So like this one, you click that. It's PDF 11 by 17. The next one, PDF 11 by 17 plus levels, which again, these levels probably will be removed here because the file sizes just get too large. So, you know, there's the sizes. There's 8.5 by 11 landscape and portrait because that would be the, some sheets you guys might have portrait. So we added those in there. And then, then all the sizes are repeated for print. So that's for printing to a printer. And so these ones will automatically select the plot config that's needed. So by selecting it. So you can apply the print style to specific sheets, certain sheets that you might have different things. For, I don't know why, but you can do that. So lastly is printing. So now you can just select the print button here. Or you can do file, print. And so since I selected the PDF, it's it knows it's going to print the PDF. It says type Bentley PDF print driver. It's going to print as a single print job. And then here's the default path and name. So it's just going to go to that project's plan package folder. And it's going to be named with whatever this top folder is named as is the default name. You can change that as you guys wish. And so when you print it, you just hit OK. So I had it, I checked on to open after it was done. So this is what it opened up to. Um, if you In the Acrobat, you guys can hit F4 to bring up this dialog to get to your your bookmarks and so you can see how it'd be advantageous to do this because now you can easily navigate your multi-page PDF so I think it's really cool that you can see the station ranges right there um, one last thing I wanted to mention is if you're gonna print to a printer I'm gonna change my plot config to a printer one to show you guys what it would look like which I don't think I gave it enough time so when you change the print uh, under print setup I changed the to um, the printer plot config file and then you can choose your printer that you want to print to and that's pretty much all you really have to do because the print style setup if it's landscape or not or what size you should do, but you can find that in there as well. But that's going too deep into it, so so that's how you would print straight to a printer if you needed to do that. And so that's really the gist of it. It's not too complicated. If you guys have questions, comments, you know, let us know. But until next time.